Welcome everybody, my name is Peter Post. I'm the Chief Representative in Los Angeles and together with my colleagues in Brazil, Texas, Mexico and Argentina, we are organizing the second season, the first episode. It's great to see a lot of new faces. Uh, we did it differently compared to the first season. This time we organized it around sectors and the first sector we wanna highlight is the water sector. So it's great to see from the different uh, uh, from the different regions uh, so much interest. Let me um, let me continue by by telling a little bit what you can expect here. Um, well, let me first tell you about the MBSO uh, network. There are 22 offices in the world. For those new to the MBSO networks in 11 countries, it's all coordinated by RVO in the Netherlands and we are part of the economic network of embassies and consulates. In the next slide, you can see how we are spread out in the uh, Americas. Oh, this is actually, let me see the one. Yeah, this is uh, how we are spread out in the Americas. So as I mentioned, uh, it's an extension to the economic network. Uh, we're spread out in the Americas and very happy that this new season also Brazil is joining from Porto Alegre and Belo Horizonte. Um, and it's just showing you how well represented you are in, in the Americas. Uh, and then on the next slide, you see the different teams from the different MBSOs. Every office has two people equally important, a chief representation and a dep deputy representative. Uh, you're gonna talk to them later in the breakouts and obviously we're always here at your disposal to, to help you out. So today we, we're going to talk about water. And before we gonna go into the breakouts, because that's definitely uh, the most important part of this whole dialogue. That's why we call it dialogue, because we wanna talk to you, we wanna hear about your questions, your experience perhaps, or your uh, ambitions and ideas. But first we would like to very, very briefly touch on how the water sector looks like uh, in less than two minutes. And let me just kick off with the situation in Los Angeles. Maybe not known for a lot of people, but it's, I mean, Los Angeles is a city, but it's, it's bigger than the Netherlands in terms of size, in terms of population, uh, it's, uh, and in terms of the economy. It's a huge area here. Also compared to the Netherlands, as you can see in the next slide, is it's a coastal city. So there's a lot of water involved here. However, the context is very different. So where there is an abundance of water in the Netherlands uh, because of the rain mainly, but also other reasons, there is a huge shortage of water in Los Angeles with a very dry and warm climate. So 60% of all the water in Los Angeles comes from other areas and especially the north uh, through rivers and through artificial rivers uh, in Los Angeles. So that means there's a huge challenge here in Los Angeles. It's divided into nine different watersheds, the whole area. And also the Los Angeles government really puts a lot of emphasis on making sure they can deal with these challenges. So water is a really hot topic for many, many reasons. And um, on the previous slide, I also put some buzzwords to show you what kind of topics are active here. It's very well organized. A lot of government tax money goes to water products, uh, projects. And on this website you see in this page, more than 80 projects already defined uh, on which you can uh, have a look already and in which we maybe can help you to, to figure out. Also on the next slide, we work very closely together with the Netherlands Water Platform. It's, it's nice to see that some people are also joining uh, from the Netherlands Water, Water Platform and very closely with the, the consulate in San Francisco, where there are like a few experts working from the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water. And yeah, we are happily, happily like to also involve you in this process uh, we're going to build up here in Los Angeles. So this is about Los Angeles. Uh, we move on to the next uh, country, and that is also in the United States, and this is Texas, which will be introduced to you by Saskia. Saskia has to unmute. Yes, I'm on mute. Thank you. When, thanks, Peter, for int the introduction. Uh, when people think about Texas, they mainly think about two things, cowboys, oil and gas. And when they think about water, it's about flooding. Luckily, there's much more, and I want to tell you something about it in the next slide. Well, can some, yeah, thank you. Uh, when you think about Texas, you have to realize that it's the second largest state in the United States, 28.3 uh, million people, so that's quite a lot. It's the ninth largest economy in the world, and it's 16 times bigger than, than the Netherlands, so um, yeah. Maybe you don't think a lot about Texas, but we have so much to offer. And when you look at the water industry, we have a market that is about 9 billion in value 
that there is to, to gain. And then when you see this picture, there is a lot to do, and I'm not going to mention it all. Um, but yeah, you can read it yourself, and later on, you can also look it back. There is a lot to do in Texas, and maybe go to the next slide now. Uh, when you look at the different water, you know, let's say resorts in Texas, there are uh, three sectors, I would say, the natural and resilient water cluster. Uh, we have to do with drought in the north. We have to do with a lot of floodings and storms in the south. And we try to live with water uh, as well. Well, you see a picture where the shells are empty, there's no water. That's also something we see a lot uh, during uh, hurricanes and those kind of things. A second sector is the reuse and the quality of water. Uh, we don't work a lot in that debt, but in, I hope it's going to change. Um, also, Hasenboer is here, so maybe they can do some, they are not here for a reason. Uh, reuse and quality of water in the energy sector, the agricultural sector, the industrial sector, and the public facilities. So there's a lot of opportunities there. And also smart water and infrastructure. We can also um, yeah, have some innov innovative uh, opportunities here. Uh, what I would like to conclude is that we're going to work on a sector report on water for Texas. So this is just a highlight and in the sector report you'll find all the, the opportunities and innovative things there are. So uh, be aware of what's coming. Um, the sector report will give you more input and this is just a highlight. So thanks for being here and we talk to each other later in the outbreak, breakout rooms. Okay, Saskia, thank you very much. And we move on to the south, to the neighboring country, Mexico, which will be introduced by our colleague, Steven. Thank you, Peter. And welcome everybody to, to Mexico. Um, we prepared a small infographic about the water industry in Mexico, uh, where you can see that mostly 76% of all water usage is used in the agricultural sector. Um, and in Mexico, 95% of the people have access to tap water. That means that a lot of, well, that doesn't mean that a lot of uh, sewers are there, but that means that a lot of people have tanks on their houses or under their houses with water. So transported by trucks uh, to the houses. Um, wastewater treated is 53%. And unfortunately, we still have a lot of death by uh, water diseases. So uh, don't drink water in Mexico. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Some opportunities that we see in Mexico is that, um, so we, we see that uh, the government now is uh, investing in, in technology and treatment uh, technology and recycling. Um, but unfortunately, Mexico, Mexico City is a, is a city that is sinking. So the picture you see behind me is getting lower uh, all the time for approximately 40 centimeters a year. Uh, the pipeline systems are, are old, up to 40 years old, so they need renewals. And we see a lot of opportunities for uh, the water sector in the agro, where uh, in Mexico you use around 40 liters to produce a kilo of tomatoes, instead of four liters uh, what we use in the Netherlands. So there are some technologies that can be implemented. A small overview of Mexico. I hope to see you all in the breakout rooms to talk more about uh, the opportunities. Thank you, Steven. And we're going more down south to Brazil and first Belo Horizonte, introduced to you by Willem. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, for the people that don't know Brazil, uh, Minas Gerais, in terms of economy, is the third largest state after Rio and Sao Paulo. Um, within 800 kilometers, you will find 80% of our uh, national product, uh, of the Brazilian national product, 16 river basins. The two most important sectors in the state are mining and agriculture, and both these sectors use a lot of water. Um, so there's opportunities to be found there. Next slide, please. Um, when you look at tailing dam management, um, we have a lot of tailing dams that need to be uh, dredged out. So there's, um, there's possibilities there, but also the water usage is, um, is, is high in, in mining. So we see a lot of companies that are actually using water without paying for it. So we're still having, uh, we're looking into um, the possibility of ground level control between agriculture and mining. And of course, in uh, agriculture, we see the same as in the other regions here, uh, a lot of spills in, in water usage. Um, and then there's more generic problems uh, in Belo Horizonte, the capital, we see flooding. And in the north of the states, we see droughts. Um, although the average rainfall here is higher 
then in the Netherlands, um, there's still droughts because it all falls within one or two weeks. I uh, hope to see you soon in the breakout sessions. I saw a lot of familiar names, so I hope you can um, meet other MBSO's offices as well today. And thank you all for your attention. See you soon. Thank you, Willem. And Brazil is a huge country, so we go to another part, Porto Alegre, which is represented by Richard. Hello and welcome, everybody. Um, uh, MBSO Porto Alegre is uh, situated in the south of Brazil. and. Um, the area is uh, known for its quality of life, business climate, and um, it's one of the, the MBSO for Southern Brazil is also one of the oldest in the network, founded 22 years ago. And that's because the Netherlands has special interest here. And uh, the reasons for that are the location, the natural advantages along, along the coast, lots of rivers, natural ports. And to, today there are five business ports here uh, with the shortest routes to Asia from this side of the Americas. And um, people say that things are organized efficiently here. Um, there is a strong cultural connection also with neighboring countries, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Spanish is spoken uh, for this reason. And also English, German, and Dutch is spoken here um, because of the many Europeans that like this area. And to give some highlights for Dutch companies on water, um, we need water because agriculture is very important. Uh, the region feeds Asia and exports a lot of rice and irrigation systems are needed. Uh, there are good opportunities regarding sanitation. And then there is the world's largest energy, energy producer here with the hydroelectric power plant of Itaipu. Uh, so Dutch companies are providing high level consultancy services. And um, by the way, it's also highly advised to visit the Itaipu uh, waterfalls if you're in the area. They're among the world's most beautiful. Um, flood mitigation is also important um, here with uh, lots of opportunities for Dutch companies. And we came across several clean water projects for rivers, lakes, and of course, the sea. And water sports is important. Uh, in Itajaí is one of the ports in the north of our area. Uh, there is the ocean race stopover and we will organize many projects around water footprint here and this is going to be a fantastic opportunity to meet people um, in the sector uh, so this is just um, uh, a short overview uh, but i hope you feel welcome to contact us in Porto Alegre anytime uh, and, and about any opportunity you might see and also in the breakout of course thank you thank you richard and last but not least in the most southern part of of Latin America, Argentina, which will be presented to you by Bastian. Good evening to you all. Indeed, all down south in America is Argentina, which is the second economy of South America. And it's an immense country with great natural resources and a very diverse climate. If we look to challenges in the um, water sector, the first is the public sector or the public services. Um, with still 15% of the people uh, that has not direct access to drinking water, 40% uh, without uh, connection to sewers, and 80% of the wastewater is being uh, is not being treated or treated very poorly. Um, also, climate change has an important uh, effect on, uh, on on Argentina. So there's every time more intense and more frequent uh, excess or deficits of, of water. Um, and water management is not uh, managed by, uh, by basins, uh, like in the Netherlands, but on ge geopolitical uh, regions. So that makes it a little bit more difficult to, to manage. If we look to opportunities, it's uh, important to uh, mentioned that the Netherlands is um, recognized for its expertise. There have been and there are still ongoing uh, collaboration projects, mainly on government to government and knowledge to knowledge um, level. Um, uh, but the opportunities have to be found not in the public, but in the private sector and mainly related to exports uh, and to the dollar economy. Um, so agri-food sector is the, the most important uh, exporter, takes account for 70% of the exports. And there, for example, is the need for decentralized wastewater treatments 
and also technology to improve water quality and improve the, uh, the output. Um, important to mention that Argentina has um, one of the most important dredging contracts in the world, which is of the Paraná River. And there's a tender due for a contract for 10 years uh, next year. And there are very specific opportunities for Dutch companies. Um, then if we look to where the most investment uh, dollars will, uh, will go, that will go mainly to the oil and gas and mining sector, where Argentina has great reserves and, uh, and also water management is very important. So it's uh, uh, fracking on one side and uh, mining in uh, very dry areas. So there uh, we need technology and engineering solutions uh, that, that uh, facilitate safe and uh, sustainable production. Back to you, Peter. Thank you so much uh, to all my colleagues. That is a lot of opportunities and, well, let's say especially challenges. So no lack here of things to do. If you feel, because you only could choose three breakouts that you really want to talk to a different region, don't worry. Uh, at the end of this uh, whole webinar, you're going to see our contact information and we're readily available to you. So we're going to move on now to the most important part of this dialogue, the breakout sessions. What's going to happen that in a few seconds, you're going to go to your first breakout. Within this breakout, uh, you're going to meet the people from the office that you would like to talk to. Please keep it concise. Respect the others. It's only 12 minutes, and before you know, it's going to be over, and we would really like to learn uh, what your ambitions are in the region or perhaps some, some stories that you have, uh, uh, have like successes or obstacles uh, in this, this region. Um, we're going to do this three times. At the end of each breakout, you will see a button coming into place. You still have 60 seconds left, then, and then you will move to another breakout. So it might look a little bit messy, but it's like a real conference where you walk from the one room to the other room, and the different representatives, they will stay in their room. So for now, have a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to see you all back at the end during the wrap up. And this is the cue for Renee to start the first breakout round. See you there. So everybody coming back to the big room. Welcome back. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> this is always, uh, it goes really quickly with interaction. And I hope you had some good time. Apologies if it was too short, but don't worry because uh, we are still here and we are still uh, very much uh, happy to, to help you afterwards. Um, this, was, uh, this was the first episode of the second season. This time uh, it was about water and next time it's gonna be about agriculture and healthcare. So we might not see you, although water solutions are also very welcome for the agricultural sector. And even in the healthcare sector, uh, hospitals, there are a lot of water uh, that needs to be cleaned and used uh, over there. So maybe see you back over there. As I said again, on the next slide, um, you will see our contact information. Don't worry to contact us at any time. I feel in our breakout, we're definitely going to follow up because we feel there are opportunities for, uh, for these uh, Dutch innovations. For those that still have some time, because we are really uh, at the end of the hour, um, just if you like, stick around. We actually uh, attached a nice optional fireside chat, as we call it, which means that I'm going to stop moderating. We just extended with 10, 20, or 30 minutes as long as you want to stay. Just consider it a network drink after an event. You only have to, uh, well, make sure you have your own drinks. We cannot provide them to you. So I would say uh, get comfy. It's already evening in the Netherlands. I might uh, refill my coffee. You might want to take a nice coffee or a wine or whatever you like. It was really great to have you. I hope to see you back in the uh, next episode. Thank you so much, and um, yeah, hope you uh, you just hang on here and uh, and have a nice informal chat uh, with us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good day, and talk to you another time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you all. Compliments. Thank you everybody. Thank you.